Welcome back to C Sharp Tutorials for Beginners. This time we're going to learn about using the random class to generate numbers. Now before we get started, the first thing I want to mention is that C Sharp's random class provides what is called a pseudo-random number generator. Now it's not fully random because it uses a set of mathematical steps called an algorithm to pick these numbers. But for all practical purposes, we can use them as random numbers. It's just a good fact to know, especially if somebody asks you on an interview. So to create our number generator, all we need to do is create a new object of type random. And from there, there are a lot of ways we can generate our numbers. The most basic way to use the random class is in generating a random int. And all you have to do is use your random object dot next with empty parentheses. And what that's going to do is return a non-negative random int. So it's going to start at zero and go to the highest number that int can be. And we can see our number in action. If we write it to the console. And when we do that, we'll see our pseudo random number here. So this gives us a random int, but that's not usually the most useful way to use a random number generator because it's not bounded by anything except for the fact that int has a maximum value. So our next usage of the random class would be to generate a random int between zero and some number x. And to do that, Let's say random2 equals random.next, and then we could give it our x bound. Now I'm saying 101 because this will generate a number between 0 and 100. So it's important to note that this number that you pass into next is not inclusive. So it will go from 0 to, but not including, this maximum value that you give here. So now we can write random int 2 to our console, and we will get a number between 0 and 100, which is usually more useful than just a random integer. So next let's say that we want to be able to generate a random int between some x and some y. And we could do that by saying random int 3 equals random.next, and then we could give it our x and our y. So let's say we want to generate a number between 1 and 10. So we would say 1 and then we would say 11, and that would go anywhere between 1 and 10. So it's important to note that the minimum value is inclusive, but the maximum value, like before, is not inclusive. So it will go from 1 to up to 1 less than 11, 1 through 10. So now we can see this in action by printing our random at 3, and we will get a number somewhere between 1 and 10. So next, let's say, instead of an integer, we want to generate a random double. Now we can say double, random double, equals random dot next double. And what this is going to give us is a double somewhere between 0 and 1. So if we print our random double, all we're going to get is some decimal point number that is less than 1. Now it's worth noting here that the random class does not provide any overloads for the next double method. So you can only generate 0 to 1. You can't specify a max value, you can't specify a min and a max value. So if you need a double larger or out of the bounds of 0 to 1, you need to couple this call with a random integer call. So you could generate a random integer 1 through 10 and then add a random double to it to get a random double 1 through 10. Or if you needed a random double 0 through 5, you could just multiply the next double call by 5 and that would generate anywhere from 0 to 1 and then multiply that by 5, giving you a random double 0 to 5. So now that we know how to use the random class to generate numbers, let's talk about some practical uses of it. One of the more common uses of the random class is to get a random item out of a collection, like an array or a list. Let's say we have an array of names, we have Bob, Jim, Sam, Mary, and Kate. So we want to pick a name at random from this collection of names, and we know that to do that we need to pick a random index. Well, we could say int random index equals, and then we could say random.next, and we could put our names.length. And what that's going to do is give us a random integer between 0 and up to, but not including, the length of our collection. So if the length of our collection is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 
we know we have indices 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is going to give us a random number 0 through 4, and that will be our random index. So from there, all we would need to do is print our collection at index, random index, and that will print a random name from our list. So we got Jim that time. We can run it again. We got Mary that time. So again, our random index, we're using the overload, which takes a maximum value that is not inclusive. So it is very easy to pass a collection's length here and go from the first index zero to the last index, which will always be the length minus one. So it's very easy to use this call to get a random index. Now for our last example, let's say we want to do an experiment where we are going to generate 100 coin flips and see our results. So we know we want to generate 100 coin flips, so let's make a for loop that goes from zero to less than 100, incrementing i every time. Then let's say that our coin flip is going to be equal to a next integer from zero up to, but not including two. So this would be zero or one every single time. So this will be heads is one, tails is zero. So now we're flipping our coin 100 times. We need something to store our results. So we'll say int heads equals zero, int tails equals zero. And now if our coin flip is one, which is our heads, we'll increment heads. And if it's not one, we'll increment tails. So now we are flipping our coin 100 times. We are collecting our results. Now we just need to print them. So I am going to use our string interpolation to say heads followed by our heads variable. And then I'm going to say tails followed by our tails variable. So now when we run this, we effectively have a simulation that flips a coin 100 times and prints our results. The last thing I want to talk about for the purposes of this beginner tutorial is the fact that I instantiated one random number generator to generate all of these numbers, including this entire simulation. There are two reasons why it's recommended to only create one random number generator and use it to get all of your numbers. And the first one is that instantiating a random number generator is kind of expensive. So if you did it every time you needed a number, you would make your performance go down. The second reason is if you initialize multiple random generators back to back like this, or if you say initialize them in a for loop to where they're being created very quickly within one another, what can happen is that your random number generators will have the exact same sequence of numbers. So then every time you use one, you may get the same number as when you used the last one. So that can give you all kinds of bugs and completely invalidate your simulations. So you need to make sure that you use one random number generator to generate all of your sets of numbers. So that's as far as I'm going to go with random. Next up, we are really going to do something different and learn how to read and write to files on your computer. So thanks for watching, everybody. I do appreciate you. I hope this is helpful. Happy coding. And as always, until next time, take care.